Welcome back to Sunrise Day. Well, we're focusing on the all sector. We've got uh, Yvier Richards, who is the Executive Director, uh, Corruption Observatory. He joins us from our studios in Abuja. Good morning, Yvier, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Well, thank talking you about so the much. oil sector, uh, they've been thumping their chest, uh, talking about their seven big wins. But looking at it from 2015 up until now, um, and observing from a distance, what have you noticed? Any improvement from previous operations and now? Um, I think there is, there's been no remarkable improvement, uh, especially given the fact that this administration uh, prides itself uh, in the area of transparency and accountability. And uh, what has happened so far in the NMPC, especially, under this administration, I would say that it's been additionally very poor. But uh, I'm just wondering on what grounds that you say it's been very poor, because they've looked at how uh, they've set out some policies and they're going ahead to implement some of those policies. So if you can be a little more specific, what exactly would you say has been very poor? Uh, I think I, I, I categorize these things under three broad sectors. Uh, the first thing I did was look at the issue of the pump price of uh, petrol. And then the number two thing, I looked at the legal framework that permits enormous leakages in the NMPC. And the third thing I looked at uh, is the national daily consumption of well. If you look at the pump price of, uh, of uh, PMS, this administration came into office uh, in May 2015. And at that time, the price was 86 naira 50 kobo. The price of crude was $67 per barrel. Uh, between that time <coughs> and the month of May 2016, the price had no dives of crude to about $48 per barrel. And that was when the administration increased uh, the pump price of petrol from 87 naira per liter to a whopping 145 naira per liter. And the justifications they gave at the time was a, a lack of foreign exchange for uh, independent marketers to meet up their importation quota. They also spoke about the total removal of petroleum subsidy. They talked about the fact that uh, that price will make products available everywhere and anybody who can meet the specifications of the NMPC is free to import. They also spoke about maintaining existing refineries and building new ones. A bogus promise was that by the year 2019, we will not be importing petroleum products again. And to that, the government gave uh, a lot of uh, social promises, uh, feed the poor, um, 5,000 Naira for the poor and all of that. As we speak, maybe you can judge because the figures are there for us to see. I wish I could talk differently. But the figure that stares me at the face shows that nothing, nothing has changed at all. Now, when I leave that sphere and I go into the sphere of the legal framework that permits leakages in the NNPC, I would expect that an administration that prides itself uh, in the area of transparency, integrity, and accountability, looking at hindsight, the fact that this framework had permitted leakages, enormous ones in previous administrations. Take a look at the Jonathan administration. He wasn't Minister of Petroleum, Designing he was. Till tomorrow, we are still trying to uh, discover the money stolen under Designing. It The list is endless. From the days of Daokoro till now, um, Rewanu Lukman till now. So I would expect, and Nigerians were very highly expectant, that the first thing this government ought to have done was to have visited the legal framework of the NMPC and then make all the necessary changes and block those uh, loopholes that permit all the leakages. But the, the president is the minister of petroleum, and none of those things have been done. And that was what also uh, fueled the issue of the controversial $25 billion contract scam in which the president had been seriously fingered. And the National Assembly promised through his working committee 
to unravel every that they would leave any stone unturned. You remember clearly at that time, Chamberlain, I told you that, look, these people, they will prefer political solutions to this constitutional problem. And as we speak up till now, that matter, no Nigerian is, all, is talking about it till now. I remember clearly that Agbakoba went to court, you know, to question why the president should be minister of petroleum and the president of the Federal Republic. And I think that is also, uh, that's also in the making. So, you will agree with me that the legal framework of the NNPC also permitted that corporate breach, corporate governance breach, that existed between the junior minister and the GMD of the NNPC, in which the nation's procurement law uh, is sidelined at will and portions of it are taken when it so suits and where they so this. Look, this is an agency that produces over 90% of the nation's resources. When we spoke about this issue the last time, I told you that the board of the NNPC should be made of a representative from every state. And I remember clearly Mark Bell was saying, but won't that cause this, won't that cause that? But look at what it's telling us at the face. Enormous wastage, enormous leakage, only two persons making decision of the money that the, the country holds, and that's the president and the GMD of the NNPC. How shall we continue like this? This administration has failed woefully as far as the NNPC operation is under this Buhari administration.